Hello, my name is Kayla. I am the Intact Practice Director here at CompuData. Today we're going to talk about the Interactive Custom Report Writer. Um, the ICRW is one of the tools that work to give you better insight across your company, making it easier for you to make better business decisions. This is a reporting tool, um, part of Sage Intact. Uh, you can access it in a few different ways. So if you look in the drop down menu under reports, you can go to the report center. Um, if you click on that, you can see the interactive customer reports that exist under here. Um, anything that says ICRW next to it is going to be an, a report that's created out of ICRW. Um, you can also access it under the advanced reporting here under all. Um, so I click on that. This will give me a list of all of the interactive customer report writer uh, reports that you have access to. Um, to build a interactive customer report, you can go to, so there's a few different ways. If you go to the report library, you can actually start with one of these pre-made um, out of the box reports that Intact has provided. Um, if you just have to go in and you can come into any one of these, you can see there's quite a bit with different reporting areas. Um, so you can go find the one that you want to build upon, edit, and then you just, will save as, um, and then you can make any changes to it. So here is in the top right corner, there's a save as button here. If you click that and you wanna make sure that you're in your um, your environment. So here is my demo environment, CompuData CRE. You would rename it um, and then it would be available in your list of, in your drop down list. Um, from there, We'll just go ahead and navigate to the define tab. So the dot define tab is where you specify the data to include in the report and how it will be displayed. Um, you can use the define tab to add and delete columns to the report as well as provide any filters. Um, so I just mentioned the different reporting areas that we have. This one specifically is looking at the jobs reporting area. Um, and if we drill down, we can see all of the attributes that are available in this reporting area for job. Um, so there you can see there's quite a bit of different options here. These would include any custom fields as well um, that you included on the job. And then if you continue moving down, you can see the measures, which are going to be the amounts and different um, budgeted billing amounts, so the different job summary information. Um, and then under related objects, you'll have a list of other reporting areas that are linked um, natively from this reporting area in intact. So they've already created a relationship with all of these different reporting areas so that you can easily include fields from different attributes and different dimensions. Um, so for example, manager, if you want uh, the contact information for the project manager that's assigned to your job, you can easily bring that in using these different reporting periods. Um, a couple other reports that I have to show you um, have include different reporting areas. So we have AP transactions, AP details, again, all of the attributes. And you can see in this one, it's got a list of dimensions. Um, so the prior one was the job dimension um, and all of that attributes. You can actually still access that through the AP detail. Um, so if I expand on job, everything that was in that prior report we just looked at is actually available here. Um, so there's a ton of flexibility on what you can include just right out of the gate uh, in, in these reports. Um, and again, that's every attribute for every one of these dimensions listed. And then again, related objects um, for AP specifically. Um, so in order to look at the how the report is rendered, um, you would go to the refine tab. So before I was in the define tab to choose my columns and create filters. If I go into the refine tab, uh, this enables you to customize returned results without affecting the underlying data. Um, so this is where you would go to format. Um, if you want to edit an existing one, uh, then the refine tab is what you're going to is what is going to open as a default. Um, so to make changes to a report, um, you have a couple different views. Um, so we can see views down in the bottom left corner. Some of these are table views. Um, some of them might be pivot table views. Um, so you can either add a new one by clicking in the drop down here, add a title, add a table, add a pivot table, and add, add a filter. Um, when you go to add a new one out of the box, it will take you directly into what we see here. And then if we wanted to add that pivot table, so we'll go ahead and create this pivot table. So again, you can create any rows. Um, you can define 
the columns, the measures, so what we're going to be calculating um, and and reporting on. Um, if anything you want it wants to be excluded, you would just include exclude them so that you're not deleting them from the report. Um, because, if, for instance, if you want to prompt on it or filter on it, uh, we'd still need it included in under the define tab, but we don't want to show it as part of this pivot table. Um, we also have the ability to create um, grand totals. So if you want to show the total after, we can do that. We can also show subtotals on each of these different records. So maybe we wanted to summarize at the job level and we have the option to do it either before or after, and I usually do at the end. Um, so we can look at the job totals at the very end. So you that scrolling down, showing those totals. Again, you have all of the job totals now at the bottom and then grand total. So if I change this to after, then each of the different jobs that are broken out here, you'll see the different totals. Um, so tons of flexibility creating the pivot tables within um, the interactive customer report writer. Um, and then when you're done, you would just hit done. And then now this is available to add to what you have already laid out. So we, we have two different tables side by side here. We're going to include the pivot table view. Maybe we're going to delete these two tables so that we just have our pivot table. So then going through some of the different action items we have here, you can print this report directly to PDF. Um, we can export this report to Excel or in a formatted view, so we can do it to PDF, Excel, PowerPoint. Um, we can print and export at the same time, um, and then you can put in these different filter parameters. Um, calculated column, so this calculated column can be, um, we can use a, a various series of different formulas. Um, some of them are listed here. Um, so the most popular one being, you know, filtering let's see the case, a case when or, you know, case switch. Um, if we wanted to aggregate so we can summarize, we can do a rank. Uh, there's quite a bit of different formulas that we can include in here, um, which gives us the ability to basically recreate any Excel formulas that that you have. Um, so really replacing anything that you're doing outside the system, we can do with an interactive customer report writer. Um, and then we can also add groups. So groupings, we can uh, calculate and uh, have a new calculated item. This would be looking at a specific column or dimension or attribute um, and then creating calculations based off of uh, specific parameters. And then we can also create um, how we, if we want to drill down into some of the dimensions that we have and then um, just formatting the data, we can do that here. We can also import formatting from another report with this option, um, and then we can also rename the compound layout. Um, another thing that we can do is in the data viewing section here, um, we can ensure that all the columns added to the report um, in the table section Um, we can, so we have two options here uh, available to view the report. We have the fixed headers with scrolling content. Um, so you would select this to see the title headings even when you scroll down. Um, so for most reports, setting a large maximum width will allow all columns to appear without needing to scroll across. Um, for reports that contain a large amount of columns, you might need to scroll horizontally. Um, so you can actually max this out at 280 and then 1800 so that nobody's having to scroll down or across, but this gives us the ability so that all of these titles um, here are going to stick. So it needs to be 1800. So now you can see that it's extended out so people are not having to scroll. Um, some other reports here. Um, just to give you some some idea of what we can do. So these are all different filters and calculations based off of um, you know actuals versus budgets. We can change the formatting so that if it's a negative, it's actually showing up in red. Um, anything in blue, we can drill down into. So um, going back over here to this report. Let's see. 
here we go, bill number. So you can actually go to the to the bill number here. Um, so we can link and create drill down capabilities. Right now I'm in the report writer, so I think it'll take a minute to, to get there. Um, but in the pop-up, of course, is blocked. Um, but we can create drill down capabilities within the interactive customer report writer as well. Um, so going into our um, prompt here, So the prompts tab enables you to create multiple runtime reports. Um, we have the option to create a prompt on any of the columns that we've added, or we can um, add other columns. So if it's not available in the report, we can still select it from the reporting area that we had added it from. Um, and then we can also create variable reports, variable prompt reports, and then currency reports as well. Um, so there are a few differences between the filters and runtime prompts. So with filters, data is going to be filtered automatically. So if we go back to the define tab here, um, and the data does not match the requirements that are shown in the report. So when you filter, it's going to just, it's only going to result in what we put in the filter and the end user might not know what the filter is. Um, so you want to make sure that that's very clearly communicated. Um, but with the prompts, the person running the report will be the ones to um, supplying the specific information to run the report. Um, so then that way they can supply the different information each time you run the report and it's not going to be filtered specifically for what we put in the filtered tab. And then we have the custom tab here. So in the custom tab, you can examine the, the SQL statement. Um, so intact it now is available to um, create reports using SQL. Um, so you can basically paste your SQL report here combining multiple reporting areas. Um, and then that way we can, you know, we can cross-reference if it's not available in the native reporting area that Intact has provided, um, then you can create that SQL. Um, but this is recommended really for advanced or users or developers. Um, so just know that that's available. And um, I don't have anything else to share right now on Interactive Customer Report, uh, but keep an eye out for some of my advanced Interactive Customer Report writing um, how-to guides that I will be um, sharing shortly. Thank you very much. Have a great day.